Ah, well, you know by now how I feel about the lefties. I think my audience will likely concur with my assessment. Uh, they're all completely insane. One but need to glance at their Twitter feed or whatever troglodyte womble of an outlet decides to host their fuck with it writings to think, mm, good lord, you people don't get out much, do you? Wonder if we can find some data on ratio of fresh air to screen time that will indicate one's proclivity towards political alignment. I should ask Ada, maybe she has some data on that. As you might expect, I have a particularly special brand of moron to use, a returning favorite piñata I like to wail on, Robert Reich. Except this one doesn't drop sweets, only cancerous matter that will rot away your brain instead of your teeth. Maybe US mainstream media should begin using the term fascism. <clears throat> Yeah, this is what like punch a Nazi. Who's a Nazi? Everybody that doesn't agree with you. That was said ironically five years ago to the day, September the first, twenty seventeen. Clearly, the man is very up to date on social fucking affairs. Does a wonder he's a journalist at all. Then again, I think he's in his mid seventies. I would be amazed if he remembered what he himself wrote five days ago, let alone ongoing mainstream rhetoric the past five fucking years. I've been watching the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, for some time. Oh, have you really? Do go on. Last Tuesday, I tweeted, just wondering if DeSantis is now officially a synonym for fascist. God, I hate him. <sighs> I am so sick of this pathetically infantile propaganda. It's just so bloody lazy. Come up with something new, you bunch of cockeyed halfwits. I was surprised at the outrage my little tweet provoked in right-wing media. <sighs> no one is outraged at you, you pillock. They're bored because you sound like a fucking drone. The Washington Examiner, for example, called me an ultra-left-wing elitist, they're correct, by the way, who wrote an insulting slur, which is what left-wing ideologues do when they discuss Republican politicians who pose any threat to the existence of their political ideology. Anyone the Democrats don't like or disagree with is a fascist. Tell me, folks, do you think he is going to, in any way, prove this sentiment incorrect? No, you'd be correct. This was among the kindest responses. After a half a century in and around politics, I've got a thick skin and a thicker skull. But the size of the blowback on my little tweet makes me think I struck a nerve. No, you don't. You just want to peddle this stupid shtick to stoke outrage because you're a lazy piece of shit propagandist masquerading as a journalist. DeSantis is the most likely rival to Trump for the Republican nomination in 2024. The Harvard and Yale educated DeSantis, what did they teach at Harvard and Yale? Uh, how not to run a state into the ground, perhaps, you fucking idiot. Sorry, I legitimately hate this man's guts. Has been called Trump with a brain. DeSantis is the nation's consummate culture warrior. Lately, he has been campaigning on behalf of Republican election deniers around the country, as opposed to working for the husband of one who screamed she was robbed in 2016, but that's far too inconvenient. Moving on. In including gubernatorial candidate Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania and U.S. Senate candidate J.D. Vance in Ohio. In Florida, discussions of sexual orientation and gender identity are now barred in schools. Based, math textbooks have been rejected for what officials call indoctrination, to quote undoomed citation needed asshole, claiming tenured professors in Florida's public universities were indoctrinating students, they are, DeSantis spearheaded a law requiring them to be reviewed every five years. Why is that bad? Teachers are limited in what they can teach about racism and other tragic aspects of American history, which is left to speak for fuck. Right-wingers are calling our bullshit into question. Quick, smear him as a fascist. DeSantis has gotten personally involved in local school board races, endorsing and campaigning for 30 board candidates who agree with him. So far, 20 have won outright, five are going to runoffs. Which would prove he is popular among the parents. But again, if you treat the teachers' union the way Bill Clinton treated Monica Lewinsky, then it is quite easy to see why these people's knackers are in a tighter twist and a cyclist plowing through a five-car barbecue pileup. Abortions are banned after 15 weeks. DeSantis recently suspended an elected prosecutor who said he would refuse to enforce the anti-abortion law. Okay, well, if you don't enforce the law, why the hell should you keep your position? That's just sensible to me. A new state office has been created to investigate election crimes. Okay, again, why is this bad? So far, it sounds great. Florida's Medicaid regulator is considering denying state subsidizing treatments to transgender people based. Its medical board may ban gender-affirming medical treatment for youths. Very base. Disney, Florida's largest employer, has been stripped of the ability to govern itself in retaliation for the company's opposition to the crackdown on the Rainbow Coalition conversation with schoolchildren. Very, very based. Florida's congressional map has been redrawn to give Republicans an even bigger advantage 
advantage, unfathomably based. DeSantis also spews culture war rhetoric. We are not going to surrender to woke, he said last Tuesday. Florida is the state where woke goes to die. Ah, they're dead. Throw in the towel for love of God. Anyway. He describes an America under assault by left-wing elites who want to delegitimize our founding institutions. Correct. He calls the state of Florida a citadel of freedom and says his job as governor is to fight critical race theory, Faucian dystopia, uncontrolled immigration, big tech left-wing oligarchs, Soros from the prosecutors, transgender athletes, and the corporate media. Notice how he is not debunking any of this, the arrogant delusion of this little gremlin, as if just writing this will turn people off. That is the elitist shitheadery of someone who has no fucking idea what the electorate actually want. He charges using a standard racist dog whistle that we're not letting Florida cities burn down. In Florida, you're not going to get a slap on the wrist, you are going to get the inside of a jail cell. I can guarantee you I too am frowning and thinking the same thing as you. So, is it useful to criticize DeSantis' combination of homophobia, transphobia, racism and misogyny, etc, etc, all the stupid fame fucking labels, along with his efforts to control the public schools and universities and to intimidate the private sector, for example Disney, as redolent of fascism? America's mainstream media is by now comfortable talking and writing about authoritarianism, also known as propaganda. Maybe it should also begin using the term fascism where appropriate. Notice there is no question about whether or not this is in fact an accurate label, merely that it is useful for whom I wonder. Also, the Disney one doesn't make any sense. The corporation that is Disney, also a hellhole, was afforded an utterly anti-capitalist advantage compared to their competition. And this particular corporation was mixing with an arm of the state, the educational apparatus, and a different arm of the state, in this case the governor, Ron DeSantis, led the charge to rescind that mixing of the uber anti-capitalist advantage Disney enjoyed. Where exactly is the fascist part in this, I wonder? Even Joe Biden, never known as the rhetorical bomb thrower, last Thursday accused the Republican Party of semi-fascism. Because that's what he was told to do. Also, I like the way it's called accuse and not as an inaccurate label. Authoritarianism implies the absence of democracy, a dictatorship. A monarchy is not a dictatorship, and it does not have democracy, so suck it, bitch. Fascism, from the Latin fascis, I'm assuming that's how you say that, denoting a tightly bound bundle of wooden rods, typically including a protruding axe blade, adopted by Benito Mussolini in the 1930s to symbolize his total power is different. I think if Mussolini saw the way Biden operates these days, he'd be rather envious. He is spending money in a manner that would give old Benito a throbbing hard on. Fascism also includes hatred of them. Yes, because calling your opponents fascist is quite the loving unifying symbol now, isn't it? People considered different by race or religion or outside the mainstream or who were born abroad. Control over what people learn and what books they're allowed to read. You know, by this logic, that would mean parents are fascists as well, mind you, which would coincidentally also explain the FBI. Control over what have been independent government units, school boards, medical boards, universities, and so on. If you're thinking, what the fuck are independent government units? I'm very much with you there, people. Control over women and the most intimate and difficult decisions they'll ever make. You mean like deciding whether or not to take the NOD for something that has less of a chance to kill you than lightning striking your damn genitals? And demands that the private sector support the regime. Oh, do tell us about the FBI going to Facebook, you disingenuous fuck. Perhaps my just wondering tweet about DeSantis hit the nerve of the fascism now taking root in the Republican Party. Or is DeSantis' own nascent presidential campaign behind the outsized reaction to my tweet? My god, like the fucking arrogant pleb this man is. No, you piss people off because you're divisive and stupid. That's literally all there is to this. After all, if you're seeking a presidential nomination in today's GOP, there is nothing like an accusation of fascism to rally Trump's supporters. It might be a particularly useful strategy if your primary opponent in 2024 will be Trump. Am I the only one that thinks that last paragraph does not make any damn sense? Eh, then again, neither did anything else he damn well wrote. What do you guys say we'll look at that Washington Examiner article he links? Bet you that's far more sane than this one. Let's see. And just like that, now DeSantis is a fascist. If Democrats ever had an original idea, it would die of loneliness. Such is the case with them calling any prominent Republican a fascist. 
Correct. For years, Democrats used to call Republicans racist. They continue to do so, mind you. However, fascist is the new hip insult they used to rile a rapidly toxic Democratic base and scare voters into thinking that supporting any Republican candidate is contributing to the imminent collapse of the United States. For years, former President Donald Trump was dubbed a fascist. Now the Democrats are turning their eye towards Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Ultra left wing elitist and former Secretary of Labor during the Clinton administration, Robert Reich, tweeted earlier this week just wondering if DeSantis is now officially a synonym for fascist. This insulting slur has no basis, of course. This is just what left wing ideologues do when they discuss Republican politicians who pose any threat to the existence of their political ideology. It's not grounded in any reality and it is a sham, yet it never stops any of them from repeating the lie. Anyone the Democrats don't like or disagree with is a fascist. Exactly like Joe Rogan said five years ago. DeSantis started to have a bullseye on his back the minute he defeated crystal meth and male prostitute enthusiast Andrew Gillum in the 2018 Florida gubernatorial election. I don't need to write any jokes for this, do I? It seems to handle itself pretty well. The Democrats' hatred for DeSantis has only grown since then, especially during the COOF pandemic, in which DeSantis openly mocked and rejected many of the left-wing policies implemented during that time. Sadly, such attacks on DeSantis are nothing new. For example, in 2021, several pundits called him a fascist for not allowing any news networks besides Fox News to cover an election bill signing. Anna V. Escamani, a Democrat in Florida's House of Representatives, tweeted, This is how fascists operate regarding the media's exclusion. Fucking hell, I can't say you signed a piece of legislation, therefore you're a fascist. Fucking hell, talk about entitled. Sonny Hostin, one of the cackling bitches on The View, once referred to DeSantis as a fascist and a bigot. MSNBC's talk show host Joy Reid, well known for her bigoted views and statements, once declared DeSantis an authoritarian on the fascist spectrum. That's not fair, DeSantis is right wing. Anyway, the frequency in which the left calls DeSantis a fascist will begin to grow, especially if he becomes a serious contender for the GOP nomination for president in the 2024 election. None of these incessant attacks are even remotely true, but Democrats save them to scare people because they cannot articulate any legitimate criticism of Republican politicians. Any person using such hyperbolic, unhinged name-calling is not a serious person, and anything they say should not be deemed credible. Ah, I feel so much better now. And that is all for today, and I will see you all next time.